Hi, I'm Margaret Lewin, and welcome to Margaret Lewin Quilting. Most of you know I just got back from a trip to Alaska with my daughter and grandchildren, and I thought I would share with you what I take on the airplane with me. I'm one of those people that really like to only travel with one bag, and the reason for that is, is because whenever I'm flying, I always seem to be making changes in planes. I live in upstate New York near Great, the Great Lakes, and Consequently, what ends up happening is whenever I fly out of our local airport, which is usually Rochester, I end up having to have to change planes. Well, there's nothing worse to me than trying to get that big piece of luggage down while I'm trying to get off the plane because nine times out of ten, we all know that we end up with short layover, so we don't have a lot of time and we're rushing and all of that. So anyhow, what I like to do is I like to take one bag. And for the last year now, um, so I'm up to three flights, this is the bag I've taken with me. And this is a bag that I picked up at Pike's Market in um, Washington, Seattle, Washington, when I was there. The bag is made by Penelope at Pike's Place. And I will put a link below to her SD shop because I got to tell you, I love the bag. It, it just is great. A couple of things that I really like about it is, the first one is, if you can see in, it's huge and it holds a lot. It's got a magnetic snap right in the center. So consequently, what happens is it makes it really easy to secure it, but yet quickly get into it which I think is important when you're traveling because I'm always trying to get into some cash and you know try to figure out what I'm doing there. So that's the first thing. The next thing that I like about it is it's got two side clips right here. I hope you can see them. And what will happen is I can bring that in at the center and cinch it and then I can turn around and clip these two together and now look, I am really pretty close. Nothing's gonna come out of there. The other thing that I like that she did with the bag is, if I can turn this around and hopefully you'll be able to see it, but I'll lift it up in case you can. These clips here, see they're, um, what kind of clips are these called? I can't remember. Anyhow, you can take these clips, you take them off, Okay, you can take this one off the bag, get it around, Oop, there we go, and you can remove all of the handles, and then it is washable, which is fantastic in case you spill something on it, or, you know, it just gets really messy on the, on the airplane or something happens. So, like I said, my favorite bag, I've now had it on three flights. I absolutely positively love it and like I said I'll link below exactly which bag mine is so that if you would like to get one you can get to Penelope's um, SD shop to get it okay now what I also carry in here are the following items before I left for this trip to Alaska I ordered a new phone case and this is the one I got the reason why I purchased it is because of these little slots over here and because there's a little pocket here. I've got a couple receipts in there. There's another pocket there. So what I did before I left was I grabbed my driver's license, I grabbed the cash that I was carrying, and I slipped the cash in here. I slipped my driver's license and one credit card in here, folded it up and I was ready to go. All of my boarding passes were on my phone, so the only thing that I needed when I checked into the airport here at home was my credit card, my driver's license, and my boarding passes, which were on my phone. It worked out great. This was really the only thing that I needed with me. So I will put a link to my phone case. I, like, I think I've had it for about a month so far. It's not bad. I do have to make sure that it's turned off because it's not, it doesn't always automatically close when I 
close the lid, which that's a little frustrating. But, you know, it's, it's not bad. And it did exactly what I wanted it to do. And because it's all flowers, I could easily find it in my bag. So that was the first thing that was in my bag. The next thing that was in my bag was my Erin Condren planner. This is mine now. Um, this is a 2015 through 2016 calendar. So it's July of 2015 all the way through December of 2016. So I always take this and the reason why I do is because quite often things will come to mind that I need to jot down or schedules will come up and I need to coincide what's going on here back at home. So my planner goes with me wherever I go. Small enough and it's really not that heavy. So I always take it with me. So that goes in there. The next thing that goes in there is my iPad. Here's my iPad. When I ordered my new cover for my phone, I also ordered a new cover for my iPad. And I'm not as happy with this as I am the phone cover. Um, let me see if I can make this go. I have. So here's my iPad cover. And mine's the iPad Air, I think. Air 1, I think it is. But anyhow, here's my pad cover. Works great. You know, the camera on the back side shows up just fine. Not a problem there. Where my problem is, is when I looked at the picture on um, Amazon, it looked like it actually stood up. Can you see it? It, it stands up. But... What I found is if you knock it at all, I'm not going to be able to do it here, but if you knock it at all, it flops down like that. Just was not happy with that. I really wanted a stand that would stand all the time. This one stands for a few minutes, like I said, but if you bump it, it's gone. It doesn't, it doesn't stay there, which really is a pain. Um, so I am on the search for another cover. So if you by chance know of a really nice cover that will stand, but also is pretty because I wanted a pretty one, let me know. I'm going to leave a comment below and let me know what's there. Okay. My iPad always goes with me. And one of the biggest reasons is so that I can play games or so that I can listen or read a book. So I always try to download a new audiobook or an iBook or something before I go on a flight so that I have something to listen to because I get pretty fidgety. Um, I can stand about two hours on a plane without getting too fidgety, but when I hit four, which is I hit two four-hour flights on the way home, I need to do something to concentrate on something other than flying because, quite honestly, I get really really fidgety so really that's what's mostly in my bag is things for me to do while i'm on the plane so my ipad comes with me and along with my ipad this last time i bought these headphones and i will show you what they look like so these are the f headphones that i got hopefully you can see them and they were real real comfortable they had really good reviews on Amazon and I liked them. I could hear the book that was playing and um, it drowned out some of the background noise. Didn't drown all of it out, but that's okay. I could at least hear it without turning the volume all the way up to maximum. So along with this came the headphones and there's also a pocket up here on the case and inside of there I put a plug cord to charge it in case it needed to be charged but it came with a USB plug to plug it in and it also comes with a plug to plug it into your iPad directly or your cell phone or where whatever you're listening to and it does have a little mic on it so you can talk so you could use it on your phone so that was a nice little thing to take I figured 
This is not my first trip to Alaska now that my daughter and grandchildren and son-in-law are going to be living there for the next four years. So I thought it was time to finally invest in some airplane headphones. And I actually have used them around the house when I was cleaning lately. And they were nice to have. It, it helped. I could go all over my house with my iPad just sitting in one spot with not a problem. So these are the headphones that I took. Now on to more fun stuff. This is the other stuff that I took. I did take a small scissors kit. Um, I'll show you what's in here. I also try to always take some kind of handwork with me. And this is the little case that I took. And inside of it, I have my thimble, a pair of scissors. Now the blades on the scissors are less than four inches so they meet the flight requirements for TSA. But I will forewarn you that I do know if you're doing an overseas flight, I don't believe that they will approve of them. I know of a couple people that they weren't able to take them on. So um, I wasn't traveling internationally. I took them, I didn't have a problem at all. I also take thread. I take a gray, an off-white, and a white. A few binder clips, the um, wonder clips, took a few of those, some needles, and then I had some pins and a uh, sewing needle there. So no matter what it was that I wanted to do on the plane, I had su supplies to work with. Now, the piece I took with me, I can't show you. It's a mystery with Sue Spargo. If, if anybody's seen Sue Spargo's wool work, it is beautiful. It is absolutely gorgeous. So I'm working on her monthly club and I can't show you the work itself, but I can show you the threads that I took with me. So I also have in here, I have Sue Spargo's Creative Stitching. It is a wonderful book. She does great illustrations on how to do the stitches and I love to do any kind of handwork. I'll take a couple of snapshots of this and, and put it in right here so that you can see the type of work she does. It's, it's just gorgeous. I also took two bags. This is one of them, and this is one that I made. And then this is another one that I got from Moda when I went to Quilters Take Manhattan last year. So I'm going to start by showing you what's in this one. And in this one, it's just um, a ruler, my ruler. I have a two and a half by six and a half inch Creative Grids ruler with my name on it. And then I took just a sampling of different kinds of needles. So Chanel needles, a milliner's needle, these are all needles that I use when I do any kind of cruel work. Another milliner's needle. Um, let's see what other ones are in here. Uh, a long darner. And uh, short darners. And another um, 15, size 15 milliner's needles. Then I do carry a few of the Jetta Kimball's embroidery needles. So that's really what's in this bag, okay? Now this bag, as I said, is one that I made. And one of the things that I love about it is this curved side because when I zip around it, I really can open it wide. It's a great bag, comes in handy. I use this thing all the time. And the best thing about it, it just throws it right in the washing machine if it gets dirty. So I don't have to worry about it. This bag is the bag that has all of the Beyond Gorgeous threads from Sue Spargo. So what I have is some beautiful wool. And what I do when I do my wool is I start my end, but I leave the plastic casing on because that keeps all my wool thread together. So I have quite a bit of different colors of wool. We'll see if I can hold them all up. Yeah, I can. Here's all of the beautiful colors of wool that I took with me. And I'll put a link to these so that if you wanted to see them, you can see them. I'll put a link. So they're um, 
Genzana, G-E-N-Z-I-A-N-A is what it is. And it is 50% um, Lana and 50% acrylical. So they're gorgeous threads. Now, the next ones that I took with me were these four cottons. And what happens when you do wool work is you hand stitch down the wool with cotton, you whip stitch it down, and then you do decorative stitches over the top of that. So these are the four cottons that I took with me. Aren't they beautiful? I really love this orange. And then I took these absolutely gorgeous ones, which I still haven't used yet. I bought these from Sue. When did I get these? I bought these from Sue a couple years ago, or a little over a year ago now. And I haven't used them, but I just think that they are beyond gorgeous. So I took those two with me. And now here comes the real gorgeous, gorgeous threads. I kept them in a separate plastic bag for now, just to make sure that they stayed safe and clean. But these are the threads that I'm working with right now on my Sue Spargo project. And like I said, if I could show you the project, I would, but I can't. If I do that, I'll get kicked out. So I can't show you right now. But these are the threads that I used. Aren't they gorgeous? They're, um, aren't they gorgeous? Now, these are different weights of threads. So this one is, um, let me find the number. This is a number eight pearl cotton. So all three of these greens are number eight pearl cottons. Then the blue is, this is Al, Al, Alganza is what it's called. And this is number three pearl cotton on the blue. And you can see, at least I hope you can. If you can't, I'll take pictures. I'll take pictures of it too. But this is the eight and this is the three. And the three is substantially larger than the eight. Okay. And then this one is a number five pearl cotton. And the five is in the middle. So I'll hold them all up again and you can see. So the biggest number is the smallest, is the smaller thread. The smaller number is the biggest thread. So it goes kind of backwards to me. So those are the colors that I took for that. So aren't they gorgeous? Oh, I just, I just, Love doing handwork. I'll insert some pictures of a wool piece that I did um, a couple years ago for a quilt shop. Um, that I it hung in that quilt shop for a long time, but I'll stick a picture of it in here. Thank you so much for joining me today. Well, I showed you what I take as my carry-on bag when I went to Washington and whenever I fly. So thanks so much for joining me. Bye. Mm -hmm.